today we're going to be going with the Siemens Economizer Control. If you've not seen our previous video series on Economizer Basics, you probably want to check those out first. Otherwise, jump on in and we'll program this one. The key to this controller is figure out how to navigate it. It's a little not obvious. So if you look at the menu structure, the way it works on here, there's three pieces of information on the screen at any time. The far left tells you what menu you are in, one, two, three, four, five, six, etc. Then what option you're in, in this case, free cooling. And then the third piece is the value of that option. So right now we are in menu number one is the free cooling screen. And no, we are not in free cooling at the given time. The next thing to understand is how to get around in this controller. So there's a couple tricks here. So for starters, to get to menu two, I have to scroll all the way through menu one, which could be cumbersome. So I don't necessarily want to do that. So what I can do is if I hold the enter button and the down arrow at the same time, it'll scroll the menu number, one, two, three, four. If I do that, two, three, four, right? I can do the same thing going back up. So now I'm back to number one. So that'll save you some time there. The other trick is right now I know I want to go to menu number five. So instead of scrolling through one all the way down, I'll just scroll up from the top of my menu back around to the bottom. So menus one through five are the run modes. Six, seven, and eight are the configuration modes. And you cannot be in configuration and run at the same time with this controller. So once you get through the end of number five, it brings you back to number one. You're like, how do I get to number six, which is where I want to start my journey today? You actually have to leave the run mode. So I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to scroll up to number five, uh, where it says config state. I'm going to press enter. It's going to highlight it and say enter config question mark. I'm going to hit enter to confirm that I want to do that. And then it's going to take a little bit of time for it to reset. The way this piece of hardware is, it can either run the program and have some editing ability, or it can be in the full config mode, but it can't do both at the same time. So right now it's going into config mode. I'll get a little bit impatient waiting on it. It'll say welcome. And then instead of starting in screen number one, it'll start in screen number six, which is where I want to be for today. So here we are in number six. And if you look at the uh, menu structure that we have, the very first thing on there is occupancy. The default is TSTAT. That means it's going to wait for an occupancy signal to come from downstairs in the building to tell it when to open the ventilation position or when to close off fully. This is required by code almost everywhere. You have to do it. But if for some reason you're not going to do it, you're going to change this to always occupied. So you get ventilation air, but you're going to get it all the time, no matter what. If I scroll down through the menus here, I have aux one input. There's two auxiliary inputs I can choose from, and either one of them can be any of the things on the list I'm about to describe. You can have a third stage of cooling. That's an option on there. You can have W, which is what I have right now, coming from the thermostat. This is what you're gonna use most of the time. Every time you have a two-speed fan, you're gonna to have to have a W signal, because uh, as we talked about in prior videos, as this mode changes, the fan speed is gonna change anyway on the unit, so the damper position has to change with that. The more I speed the fan up, the less damper I'm gonna have open to get the same amount of ventilation there. So I have to know if I'm in the heating mode and the economizer controller already knows if it's in the uh, cooling mode. Uh, I have some heat pump options, which we'll explain in future videos, a pre-occupancy purge, which is not very common. And the other one is a shutdown signal. You would use that typically like if you have a, a duct mounted smoke detector, which is very frequently required by code as well. Every time you're above 2000 CFM, most codes require you to have a duct mounted smoke detector. What that'll do is when there's smoke detected in the duct, it'll shut down the fan system and it'll also close off the economizer damper. So right now I'm gonna have W1 be my first choice on here. And when I scroll down to aux two input, I already have that one set up to be shut down. If for some reason I wanted to change one of these, I would hit enter. It would highlight the word shutdown in this case. And then I can scroll that up to none, Y3, and through all the choices that I just mentioned. In my case, I'm gonna leave it as shutdown. That's a pretty common option. As I continue down the menu, there are a few other things on here to look at. So there's outdoor air temperature signal, return air temperature signal. By default, those are thermistors. Thermistors are by far the most common type of temperature sensor that you'd have. This is the kind that we'd mount in a return duct or in a supply duct. If it was an outside air one, it would have a, an enclosure on it for weatherproofing. Um, but they're all two wire. They're all simple to set up. Polarity doesn't even matter. It's the least expensive way to set temperature. So it's probably what you're gonna have. But if for some reason you didn't want to use a thermistor and you want to have a voltage signal, this controller could accommodate that and you could change it. 
Olivage on NTC negative temperature coefficient 10K, which is their mister. So return air temperature, outside air humidity and return air humidity uh, work the same way. Uh, you can have a zero to 10 volt, a four to 20 milliamp signal or none. All right, so not, in our case, we don't have those. Those are not common sensors to have. Mixed air temperature, typically also a thermistor. So NTC 10K it would stay on. Then we have a auxiliary input here that we can use for a CO2 sensor. It could also be used for static pressure. Static pressure is not common at all. Even CO2 is not super common, but in some places it is required by code for some applications. So you would be utilizing this. So you could turn that on to CO2 if you want. So if I hit enter, I can scroll pressure and then CO2, hit enter to lock it in on CO2. If I scroll down through there, I got a few more of these ones on here. So I have aux one input signal. What kind of signal am I gonna have? Zero to 10, two to 10, or uh, zero to five volts. So depending on the type of CO2 sensor I bought, I'd have to make sure the signal input is matching that. Zero to 10 and two to 10 are both pretty common. And then I can also set the range on this. Zero to 2000 parts per million of CO2 is the normal range of almost every CO2 sensor you'd get for commercial use. But if for some reason you got some oddball thing, you could change it here if you needed to. So normally you'll leave that alone. Leave the 2000 alone. Uh, then I got some flexible input here, aux uh, A2 input. It's a feedback signal from an actuator, not common, so you probably won't use that. And then I also have uh, a flexible output for a VFD. Also, you're not gonna use that in hardly any applications. And I could turn off my second stage of cooling if I wanted to, I don't need to do that. The next couple last ones on here, auxiliary one output and auxiliary two output, they both can do the same things. My choices on those ones are cooling stage three, okay, exhaust fan stage one or two. So as the power exhaust, uh, as the outside air damper opens or closes, the power exhaust can turn on one or two stages as the damper opens more. Um, ERV, which you're never gonna use, it doesn't work very well, this sequence in general. Um, it doesn't do what you'd want an ERV to do, so don't use it. You're probably never gonna use a variable speed fan. So really the only one you're actually gonna use is the alarm output, I have my, or the exhaust and the alarm output. I have my first one set up for a single stage power exhaust. And when I go to the second one, it's set up for an alarm. So if there's a problem with this controller, on a separate pair of wires, it sends a signal downstairs to the building automation system, to a miscellaneous input on the thermostat, to something to let you know if there's a problem with the economizer. And the very last one on here, speed of fan. I have this set up for a two-speed fan, which is pretty common. If you're retrofitting this on an old rooftop that only had a single speed fan, then you would change it to single speed. And then the very last one would be whether you want to have uh, uh, MSTP backnet or Modbus for third-party communication. You probably won't be doing either, so it doesn't matter, but you can pick between those two if you wish. So you're done now, it goes to number seven, which is all the test stuff, number eight. What I wanna do is I wanna scroll down to number eight at this point. I hold my button and the down arrow, and I'm back to run state. I'm gonna hit enter. It's gonna say enter run state question mark. I'm gonna hit enter. And now it's gonna take a little bit of time and it's gonna go back over to the main menu where I can do the basic settings and see it operating live at the same time. So we'll do that next. So now that we've configured the controller, switch back to the run state. There are some settings on here that we can do. Specifically for right now, we wanna to go to the basic settings. After we did the config and the basic settings, then this thing is functioning and up and running and it can be, be really working on a project. So I'm gonna skip all the status stuff. I'm gonna hold the enter and press the down arrow to go to menu two. Uh, so there's a few different things on here. The first one is called temp off. So this is the temperature at which we're gonna disable the economizer. The default is 63 degrees. That's a really good number to use. If you have a dry bulb economizer, I would recommend you leave it there, 63, 62, something like that. Uh, that will not comply with energy code though. Energy code is 70 degrees. So if you wanna comply with energy code for most climates, it would be 70 degrees. You would need to change that, especially here in the Midwest, uh, but it will cause problem jobs for all the reasons we mentioned in prior videos with you guys. So I would keep it at 63. If you wanna follow code, I suggest you go the enthalpy route and don't use a dry bulb sensor. So I scroll down here. Uh, the uh, I don't have enthalpy on this one wired in, but if I did have enthalpy wired in, I could set that number. The code required number is 28 BTUs. So that's what you would set that for. And that does work well. That's a good setting and it's the code required setting. If I have a CO2 sensor, I could set my parts per million limit on when I wanna start throttling a damper more closed or more open. 
So 1100 parts per million is a pretty common choice. Most codes uh, would be 700 parts per million above the outside air level. It's usually like 400 or 450 outside. So 1100 ends up being a pretty common set point. Uh, you can only do 100 increments. So 1100 is where you'd want to leave it. Uh, if you happen to be in the city of Chicago, they have a fixed number in their code of 1,000. So that's the one place you probably need to change it. So change it to 1,000 in the city of Chicago, 1,100 if you're pretty much anywhere else. Um, so if it's below 1,100, let's say your actual CO2 level is 700, it would start throttling your damper back saying, hey, there's not that many people there. I don't need as much ventilation air. And as more people come into the space, the CO2 would rise and would start throttling the damper open a little bit more. So you could save energy when people aren't at work. And when they are at work, you spend the energy, but you need the ventilation air for them. I happen to have a CO2 sensor. So I'm gonna have a vent min and a vent max for the CO2 settings on the damper. And for the two speed fan, I'll actually have four settings. So I have vent min, low and high, and vent max, low and high for the fan speed. So it does get a little bit, little bit crazy there. And if you have a three speed fan, good luck, right? Uh, that's not very common, but it would be, it'd be a little bit more complicated on there. Uh, some of these other ones are a little more obvious once you scroll through them and what they are like degrees for example fahrenheit celsius no big deal there uh the fan cfm you can tell the controller what the cfm of the fan is it doesn't really do anything much uh, there are some sequences that it could be used in but you're not going to have all the accessories for that so it's really not a useful feature so you can leave it at the default you can put the actual cfm of the supply fan in if you want to and then if you have a power exhaust which i told that i did what damper position do you want that to open up at? 65% is the default for exhaust fan number one low and then exhaust fan one high, I have 50% on there. So it does change based on the fan speed as well. So it gets kind of complicated. How, how much fan speed you have and how much damper you have open determines how much air gets sucked into the building. And then based on how much gets sucked in, here you tell it how much you'd like or when you would like to relieve some of that. So it does get a little bit hairy. And then the very last one on there is the, is the uh, uh, fan delay. So that's defaulted to five minutes. What happens there is after the thermostat calls, so the thermostat calls for stage one, as you guys know, uh, it looks at the outdoor air temperature. It says it's an economizer day. It goes into free cooling. It keeps the compressor off. Eventually stage two of the thermostat might call. And when that happens, normally what happens is the compressor would then kick on. Compressor number one would kick on. So stage one would be the economizer. Stage two would be compressor number one. What this does is it waits five minutes before it turns on that compressor after the thermostat calls for it. Because once the thermostat calls for stage two, it the thermostat tells the supply fan to go to high speed. Now I got high speed fan with my damper open and that's bringing in a significant amount of CFM compared to what it was at low speed. So that might be enough to cool the space. But if after five minutes, it's not enough to cool the space, then we go ahead and release the compressor to go ahead and engage. So hopefully that gets you on the right track. At this point, everything's up and running. There are some advanced settings that you can do, and we can talk about those in a separate video.